again Hayes and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I would like to discuss about uh, on how I became a registered nurse here in Australia. So I will discuss about the outcome-based assessment or the OBA or they call it as well as an IQNM assessment. So disclaimer so, again guys, um, everything that I will talk about here is based on my experience and my research. I'm not affiliated with anyone, so let's start. So before we start with the OBA process, I would like to inform that there are other options as well that you could take to become a registered nurse here in Australia. So first, you could actually take the conversion program. Um, it might be a year or two. It really depends on your credentials. The school will assess it and see if you're fit with whichever and then you can apply for registration afterwards. The second, you could actually take the whole master's degree or the bachelor's degree, it will be at least two to three years um, here in Australia. And then after that, you could apply for registration. But the only thing with master's of nursing is that not all schools, as I've heard, um, will lead you to the registration, so you need to check on that. So now we'll proceed with the OBA process. This is for internationally qualified nurses and midwives. So um, I will put an overview at the side. So it, it will start with self-check. After self-check, you'll have to do the orientation part one, and then you'll have to pass documents through the portfolio stage. And then afterwards, once approved, you'll need to take the MCQ examination or the NCLEX RN examination then after passing the NCLEX RN you could proceed to taking the OSCE or the obstructive structured um, clinical examination here in Australia and afterwards once you've passed that then you could actually apply for registration so let's go and discuss this steps. so the first thing that you need to do is actually go to our upper website where you need to do your self-check so this stage determines your stream. So there's stream A, B, and C. Most of us falls on stream B. But what I understood about stream A is that these are for all overseas nurses that has an equivalent nursing degree with Australia. While stream C, I think that's for those nurses who doesn't have any nursing qualification and they, they need to study first or um, advance their um, degree to be able to be qualified on either stream A or B. So let's discuss stream B now. So once you've clicked the comment self-check, you will be led to um, a page where you need to answer um, the prompt and the questions. So you'll just need to go through that questions until you reach the end and then it will tell you to register. So you'll just need to register for your upper account to be able to get into your dashboard and then verify your email and then start from there. Once you're done with your verification, you could actually start logging into your account and then you could see your stream and your dashboard there. So um, usually you'll start with stage one. So it will be highlighted which stage are you in. So stage one includes paying um, 410 Australian dollars it was actually 640 AUD before, so they've reduced the price, which is good. And then after paying, you will be proceeding to stage two, which is the orientation part one. Um, but before that, uh, just make sure that you could actually pay because some overseas nurses, they're having a hard time using their debit cards. So just try to use different cards, such as credit card for you to be able to pay for it. All right, so let's proceed to stage two. Stage two, so this is the orientation part one, where an APRA will introduce you about the Australian healthcare. So you'll just need to go through it, um, just read and watch or listen. And then you'll need to do this um, within 90 days after payment as per APRA. And then you'll proceed to the next stage afterwards. Stage three is the portfolio stage. So this stage, you actually need to submit your requirements to APRA online. So you'll just need to follow your dashboard and it will tell you which or wherever to upload it. And then um, these documents need to be notarized and certified um, based on APRA's guidelines. So you make sure you follow it or else they'll get it back to you and you'll need to resubmit it and it will uh, make the process longer. So the documents that you need to pass or submit 
or upload online are your um, certificate copy of your passport, your nursing license, nursing diploma, nursing TOR, your marriage certificate for any uh, change of name, your birth certificate, and your NCLEX RN passing letter if you have it for the last 10 years. So for those New Zealand RNs, you'll actually need to go and contact APRA first before you actually do this process because there's a different pathway that you could actually do um, to get registered here in Australia. So it's actually through the Trust Tasman um, Mutual Recognition Act um, that's agreement between um, Australia and New Zealand. So just uh, search it through. Once you've submitted all the required documents, you'll just need to wait for APRA's email about the approval of your uh, documents. So you will be able to proceed with stage four, which is the MCQ exam or the NCLEX RN. So it might take a bit longer than a month. So you'll just need to wait for it and your dashboard will just change to stage four once it's all done. Now that you're eligible to take the NCLEX RN, you could actually start registering through the Person View website. So the link will be shown on your dashboard in that stage. And then you could actually register there, verify your email address, and then you could actually pay for 200 US dollars to be able to register for the exam. You'll have to wait for at least a month to be able to get your ATT or authorization to test. The ATT is valid for six months, so you'll just need to pay 150 US dollars when um, you're able to book your exam of your you're happy to book your exam already. So you'll just need to make sure you book it within your validity date of your ATT. So that's it. Receive a confirmation email about it. And you could actually take your NCLEX RN wherever you are. So it doesn't need to be in Australia. So after taking the exam, at least an hour after or after you've received the email confirmation that you've taken the NCLEX RN, you could actually do um, the person view trick. So most nurses have done this, including myself. So um, they said it's accurate, especially the good pop-up. So once you've got that, at least you're, um, you have a good feeling that you've already passed the exam. And like the bot pop-up, it's like 50-50. So um, I can't show you now how to do it, but you could actually search about it. And good luck. <laughs> the endless RN examination in Australia will actually take eight weeks for the result to come. So IQNM exams will actually email you and notify you if you've passed the examination and congratulations. Now that you're done with stage four, you're actually waiting to go to stage five, which is to ask you. So while you wait for the result, because it will still take eight weeks, so why not um, look for a review center or how you could actually uh, surpass or pass the OSCE. So I actually made a video about um, which review center I actually enrolled in and I would still highly recommend them. So might as well check that out. In addition, for those overseas nurses or those offshore nurses that are actually doing this um, OBA pathway, I would also advise that while you're actually trying to review for OSCE and waiting for the NLEX Arden result, um, you could actually look and search for the documents that you will need to be able to apply for a tourist visa and you will be able to come here to take your OSCE because you need to actually get a visa first before they actually give you a date. So might as well collect it, um, search for it so you will be prepared once you're about to apply for the visa. On the other hand, those nurses who actually pass their NCLEX pass letter through portfolio stage and uh, APRA approve it, so you'll actually move straight to OSCE and you'll skip MC stage. So. Those nurses who actually took the MSRN through MCQ stage will need to wait for eight weeks for the result. And once they've received the notification from uh, APRA IQNM teams, then they will be able to move to stage five, which is the OSCE stage. Okay, before we actually go to stage five, I would also recommend for those nurses who have taken NTEX Australia, if you just want, it's just, it's not mandatory, but it's really up to you. If you want to get an active US license, I actually made a video about how I did my NCLEX RN score transfer from Australia to NMI Board of Nursing. So if you want to check that out, just check my video and just follow it as well. 
Okay, so let's move to stage five. So now we're in stage five, which is the OSCE or the obstructive uh, structured clinical examination, which you will need to take in Australia, particularly in Adelaide, Australia. So um, the details are listed in APRA and I'll put the address down there as well. So this one, you'll actually need to prepare for it. I would really highly recommend to make sure you're prepared for the exam because it's not that easy to pass and some people are still unsuccessful for it. So um, for those options, you actually need to apply for a visa first and be able to receive the grant. Once you actually um, have the tourist visa grant, you actually need to email your um, grant notification to APRA to notify them that you will be able to come to Australia. And from there, they will actually give you dates. Getting an exam date um, with OSCE takes a while. Um, it really depends on when you paid your OSCE. So they usually, um, based on the first pay basis, so they will email you, especially those onshores, um, about the um, next available dates if you're onshore. And if you're offshore, of course, you need to provide proof first that you have a visa to come to Australia, and they will actually put you in the queue. And then afterwards, once they actually give you the dates, you'll just need to confirm by email that you're accepting it. And then they will confirm with you that you're a part of that exam cycle already. And then after or before uh, a month of the exam date, they actually will give you the exact day and time um, when you will be taking your exam. So for offshores, I would advise for you to actually come here this month for you to be able to prepare more for the examination. Also take note that APRA provides an OSCE handbook which is in their website so you could actually download it and read it so everything about OSCE is there but um, your specific examination details will be emailed to you through the um, confirmation email of your exam. So the OSCE will actually take about two hours to finish so you need to go through 10 stations and you need to pass at least 7 out of 10 to be able to pass OSCE. So the result will take about 8 weeks. So I don't think tourist visa is enough for you to be able to stay and wait for the registration. So you actually need to go to your home country afterwards and wait for the result of your exam if you're offshore. So here comes the 8th week and Ashley app I will email you now about the result of your OSCE. So um, it will tell you if you're successful or not. If not, you'll have to do it again. And unfortunately, you still need to pay another 4,000 Australian dollars. And then you need to do the same thing again. And then wait for the result. But if you're successful, which is yay, um, you will go to stage 6, which is the application for registration. So now we're down to the last part of the OBA process, which is stage 6 or the application for general registration. So in this stage, you'll just need actually to uh, fill in your details um, and then upload all the necessary documents that's listed down below um, for you to be able to apply for the registration. So um, some of them needs to be certified and afterwards once it's completed you'll just need to wait for two weeks for APRA to um, provide your registration if you if you miss anything they'll actually email you um, also I would advise for you to prepare everything after taking OSCE especially the English examination you could actually take it after taking NCLEX for you to be able to be uh, prepared upon registration or else you might be struggling um, during that time and you will delay your registration. So the length of getting the certificate of registration really depends on you. So if you've submitted everything completely after getting that notification that you could apply, then you will get it as soon as possible or at least two weeks afterwards. But if not, then you will need to wait for it oh, well, until you actually um, comply with all the requirements and after have process everything for you. So once registered, you could actually um, check your name on the APRA website and then you will receive your certificate of registration. And for those overseas nurses, once you've actually received your registration certificate, you could actually start looking for job sponsorships for you to get those working visas and will be able to come here and work as a registered nurse. So from there, you can actually start your permanent residency to Australia. So onshore nurses have the ability to take advantage of 
um, the job opportunities that they have here in Australia. But don't worry, um, we're actually short of nurses, so you will have your own time in your own place. So, that's so I it. think that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching the whole vlog. I know it's a lengthy process, but my advice is if you really want to get something or you really want to be an RN in Australia, you'll just need to do your part. So just try it and uh, do it one step at a time and then you'll get there anyway. So thank you so much for um, supporting me. Please like, follow and subscribe and I'll post more about my life as an RN in Australia. You take care and thank you and I'll see you in my next vlog. Please comment down below for any questions. Bye!